So here we are today in the middle of the Somerset levels. It's a beautiful morning. We had a little bit of a frost last night. Mist is just starting to burn off. And today I have with me Matt. <laughs> Matt uh, entered a competition on our Fox Rage Facebook page and he lost. So he actually gets to spend the day with me for a booby prize. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, but on the plus side, he did also win rod, reel, lures, equipment, hat, glasses, and everything else. So uh, it, it, there was a plus side to fishing with me. And uh, today, uh, Matt does a lot of fishing, and uh, he does a lot of carp fishing and, and other species, but pike fishing, he's done a little bit of, but he wants to find out the, the kind of fundamentals of it. So we're going to look at, hopefully, catching, um, unhooking, weighing, lure fishing, predominantly is what we're looking at today. Um, so we're going to be looking at the retrieves, uh, different types of lures, the rods, the reels, braid, um, everything really. So that hopefully by the end of the day, Matt will have a, a pike under his belt, not literally, and, uh, and he'll be uh, feeling more confident to be able to actually go pike fishing and know that he can handle them well, uh, retrieve correctly with the lures, um, and basically just feel a little bit more confident towards uh, your Sounds pike good. fishing. Yeah, so there's no pressure, but we have to catch a pike today so, uh, so that we can uh, go through the basics. So, fancy that? Yeah, can't wait to start. Right, let's go fishing, let's see what we can do. <clears throat> We're going to fish for pike, pike have teeth. Even people who don't fish know pike have teeth. So if we were to just tie that lure on there, braid. Braid isn't great with abrasion resistance. So it's not great against rocks, let alone sharp, razor sharp teeth of a pike. So we have to put a trace on, okay? So I know you know that anyway. But some people watching at home, they may okay. not. <laughs> so what we got here, um, so we got 19 strand, 40 centimetre, and these ones are 12 kilogram there, okay? So, what you do is two in a pack. Take one out there. Hopefully we'll only go through one today because they don't kink very well. We're gonna do a Palomar knot. Okay, so we doubled up the line. So it's doubled over. Yep. You've got the swivel at the end. Just gonna push that doubled up piece of line through there. Now it's running up and down. I find when you're doing most knots, give yourself lots of extra. When you try and think, oh, I'll keep it quite nice and short and everything like that, you can quite often go wrong. So it's easier just to make it nice and easy. And then you do an overhand granny knot. Okay, you can do a double one by going back through it again. Or you can do a single one by just leaving it out. And then what you do is just open up the end, grab that bit there. There we go, and then I've, I've put the end of the uh, trace through the loop which was hanging out the end, and then it's there like that. Now with all knots, you've got a bit, this is the bit where you've got, just got to be a bit careful. What I do is I just cover the swivel with my fingertip there, because sometimes a palabar knot, they can just, or some knots, they'll trap behind the eye of the swivel. So I've just covered it over so it can't do that, and then I'm just slowly, slowly tightening it up. And when it gets a little bit closer, and before there's any friction on it, any knot, always wet it loads. Okay, because there is going to be friction, and friction causes heat, and then that can um, that can just take a little bit of the um, strength away from your line or your braid. Okay, so that is turn that on there. That ultimately is it. And then what I do is not braid will cut your fingers, so do be careful when you're pulling. So, but just just gently a few little pulls, a little bit harder each time, and then come back to the tag end. Just do that again, a little bit harder each time. And that's just buffering it all up really, rather than there just being a small amount of play and then you get a fish or you snag and all of a sudden you, ah, it goes like that and it just, it tightens up under a lot of pressure really, really quickly. You've kind of just gently eased that knot into place with some water on it. Tag end, I see some people just cut them really, really, really close so it looks really nice and tidy. But you know, this is 55 pound braid and, and it's a strong trace, it's a strong rod. If, if you're going to go and pull, that knot may slip a little bit, it may slip a, a millimetre or two. So, and there's absolutely no harm in just leaving, you know, I don't know, what's that? Probably five, six mil, a little tag on the end there. It's not going to do anything. Not going to snag on any weed or anything like that. It's not going to do anything. So take that away. 
and that's that knot. I mean, that is one of the most easiest, simplest knots, really, for attachment. Like I say, you can do the double one to make it stronger. But as a starting point, that's a very good, Especially strong, quite a strong knot. line as well. Yeah, it's really, really strong. Yeah, if you break that today. We'll have to tie another one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's it, Palomar knot. So before we start, we've got a drag on a reel. I know you know what this is because you fish for other species, but there may be people watching this who are just getting into, into fishing and uh, they're not 100% sure on, on the drag or the clutch mechanism. So um, you can hear it clicking. And what that does, if I tighten it all the way up, ah, it's going nowhere. That's not the one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because no. if we hook a fish on that, what's going to happen? You're going to get snapped. Yep, this is going to, you're going to go a hook pull, it's going to straighten, or you're going to snap. Three things we don't want for the fish's safety and, and for us personally, we don't want that to happen when we're fishing. It's not good, okay? So, you know, what we do, what I do is I loosen it down. It's probably a bit too loose, okay? Yep. The rod is a suitable rod for this lure and everything like that. You know, it's rated 20 to 60 gram. Um, and it's got, it's got a bit of give in it, but that's probably a bit much. I mean, another half turn. I want it tight enough. Carp crashed out. I want it tight, tight enough so that it, uh, it doesn't slip when I clasped, okay? But I want it loose enough that if a 20 pound pike smashes that lure in the margins at the end of a thing, uh, at the end of a follow, that um, I actually have enough drag in it, that I've got enough to set the hook, but enough for it to power away. Because if that happened and you had it on, a, on, a, on too hot, it's just it's, it's not gonna happen. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna do one of those three. So, so that's what we need to do. We need to make sure it's got enough, maybe a little bit more. The more you fish, the better you get setting it for how you like it. And also, if I get a good fish, that drag is never going to stay set like that anyway. So if I caught a good fish at range, dead baiting or, or on lure, then when I'm getting in close, and actually carp fishing as well, any fishing, when I get it in close, I just do half a turn like that. Half a turn like that puts it into that again. Because when you get it in close, that's more often than not, after a fight, the hook hole could have moved or, or they're in shallower water and they can feel it on them and they want to just power away and bolt away. So just doing that half a turn, depends what reels you're using, they've all got different drags, but half a turn, half a turn gives it enough. If it's a bit soft, you know, my finger's still there if needs be, if, it's, if it was too little, but I'm just going to slacken it off if I get it, as I get it close in, but in case it tries to power away from the net or it tail walks or anything like that. So, so you have it set so it doesn't slip when you cast, but enough give that it can take it on the, on the initial yeah. uh, strike and take. Um, and then we can slacken it off if it's a really big fish when it gets closer in. Then to cast, I see a lot of people do this. They take it right up to the tip. But really, you can cast like that, you know, fine, no, no problem. However, you're never gonna get the best from the rod. So if you can take that weight, it's the same as carp fishing really, if you can get it down to about where the spigot is, yeah? So about the join in the rod, right? So if it's about there, that rod is gonna compress the most, okay? And then, bail arm over. Flick the bail arm around to stop it from clipping over. And then, you know, it's, we're, not, we're not carp fishing where we're going for like, 120, 150 yards or anything like that. However, sometimes lure fishing, it can pay dividends to get that lure a little bit further than what everybody else does. You know, definitely that would catch me more fish on certain venues. Um, so yeah, you can swing it back. You've got, so your stance, you can walk into it if you want to go all carpy, but you know, quite often we're doing so many quick casts. It's more just about getting it right and smooth and every time. So it's just it's nice and clear and keep pointing it at it, point it. He's down, quick, bail arm over, get ready for the drop and then start just bringing it back on that gentle retrieve and then start, stop, start, stop. But you can see my line lay was instantly there yeah. and the bail arm was straight away over. A nice steady retrieve, stop. Steady retrieve, stop. Steady retrieve and then stop. That bar's there, pick it up, flicked it off the bar and back down the other side. Should be able to see that lure coming back. There it is. Yeah. 
Okay, so we're going to start here, middle of the lake. Um, it's as good as place as any. The sun's coming up. There's a bit of warm water. We've seen a carp crash out, which is always a good sign. There's some fish moving, and we've seen a couple of little silvers around topping. So at least it's not dead water, which can um, it can sometimes feel like at this time of year. This reel has been loaded up with 55 pound braid. It's only just been done, so. Your first, it can be tempting when you first put braid onto a spool just to belt it out as far as you can because you're so chuffed you've got this brand new braid on your spool but quite often what can happen is you can get wind knots and, and it's not bedded in properly so uh, what we did is we did a couple of little casts just get the braid wet and just a little bit further a little bit further a little bit further just to just to get it all bedded in and, and, and get it nice so hopefully that should um, should ease up and on the wind knots lure wise we've got a, a little 15 gram pro shad um, it's loaded so it's got the jig head already built in and it's just got one single treble on the back of it there. Um, this lake's still holding a lot of weed like a lot of the lakes are. So I think with one treble, razor sharp little treble, um, it helps run hooking so it's good for the pike um, rather than the two trebles on there. makes it a little bit easier to start off with for you. Um, and uh, also hopefully we might pick up a little bit less weed as well. 15 gram lakes, you know, which are this size, kind of four acres, that sort of size smallish rivers things they're perfect that sort of weight um, what we're going to do this lake has got an awful lot of underwater features it's got lots of gullies and bars and channels 14 foot drop-offs it's got inside gullies it's quite hard <laughs> to, to um, just turn up and say you know fish it's it's not like a carp commercial where it's the same depth all over it's a million miles away from that so um, you, you know don't get disheartened you might bring in weed and everything like that but it, once you start learning the trees and, and learning where the bars are and stuff then then you can make the cast count and then hopefully that will um, enable us to put some fish on the bank so to start with we're probably going to be retrieving it quite fast just getting you used to casting it out and seeing if there's anything which is kind of just willing to just chase um, if that doesn't work then we're going to go down to a place where it's a lot deeper and then there's a big open area um, and then we can work the lure a lot slower across the bottom so um, here we're going to cast out and, 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 and like I say, do it quite fast. A few little twitches on the rod tip um, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll catch. So what I do sometimes is just that little treble there. I just gently just nick it into there, okay? So you've only got one treble. Sometimes through the air it can come round and twist. Sometimes it can just catch up on the tail as it goes in with that treble around there. So we just literally just nick it in there just before the barb so it comes out easily, okay? and feel free to do some casts and I will try and give you a bit of guidance as and when. That's it. Close bail arm. That's it. That's it. Okay, so you can see the action coming through. Yeah. So let me just show you, because I haven't showed you this lure yet. So if you just look in the margins down there, so, oh, hang on, he's, he's done what I said. So he, he twisted over, yeah? That's where that, see the treble came out and then he caught on it? So we just, just put it back in a bit further. So if you look in the margins, so that's it on a steady straight retrieve. It's got loads and loads of wobble to it. When you stop, look what happens, okay? It goes down head first. See that? Yep. It's just stood up right, isn't it? Yeah, it's not on its side, it's not kinked down or anything like that. It's just gone bam. There's always going to be a few mil of silt wherever you are, you know, so it just stands up right. They love smashing lures off the bottom like that. So that, not a lot of people would put, leave a lure on the bottom for very long like that when you bring a lure back, because they would just think, oh, that's it, it's gone. Look, see, it's up right, yeah? It's up right, yeah? yeah. It's just not doing it. So you can bring it along and look at all the, look at all the rubbish down there, yeah? It's not picking any up, is it? So, and that's going to be not dissimilar to what your bottoms are out like there. So he's coming along, I stop it, hits the bottom. Give it a quick flick is the key. Get quick, you see? Quick, quick, and he's away. So, when there are pike out there, then you might fish a lot of places where there's been a lot of lure anglers. A lot of lure anglers will cast out reel, cast out reel, cast out reel. They're not letting the lure go down, bouncing across the bottom. Um, and that can make quite a big difference because it's, it's something they haven't seen all the time. Um, and with that straight retrieve as well. So if you can do a straight retrieve, see it's coming back. And then yeah. if I just, just, just pull a rod tip. Yeah, so keep your, um, let's see that tight. Always check that reel seat's on nice and tight, really, really tight. 
shut that as well. And that's in nice. That's in nice, yeah. Um, so, hopefully we won't catch one. Keep the rod tip still. So when you were bringing it, it was coming like that. Yep. So keep it still to start with, and then just put the odd little pull in it and then take it back to where it was. And watch your line angle. So when it comes through, Herons. So when it comes through, see, can you see the lure below the surface yeah. there, yeah? So when you know at that speed, it's that far below the surface, yeah? So if you flick it up. Uh, caught on the rod tip. Okay, so you can see it below the surface at that speed. So get a bit of a feel for it and think, okay, when I do this speed, I know it's a foot down with the rod held at that angle, yeah? And then when you stop, so look, I'm bringing it across. I can see the lure. Stop. One, two, three, four. Okay, it went down four counts, right? So this is how I work out swim dry fish anyway. So hopefully you can. <laughs> okay, yeah. So when I'm coming across, so I can go that same speed again, rod same angle. One, two. Now I'll start reeling again, yeah? I know that that lure has dropped down to half depth, yeah? And I know that it's clear because I count it down to four. It went down to four, right? Yeah. And I hit the bottom and I count it down to two. So you start doing two, first of all, so then you're bringing your lure back at half depth for that area there, like you know what that area is, right? And then what you can do is when you get a little bit more confident and if you're not getting any hits or takes, you can go, okay, I've let the lure down and I went down to four. Now I'm gonna count it down to three. And I know that probably about, three, probably about a foot off the bottom and I bring that steady back like that. And then you can start working the different layers of the, of the water column without snagging up the bottom. Um, and that's pretty much how I would do it for pike and perch to be able to get those depths. Heron about to come in, a lot of herons. Right, so it takes a while to, to learn that and, and, and counting down the drop and everything like that. But And it's a lot easier to kind of teach somebody this on a lake which hasn't got so many different depths. <laughs> All right, so whack it out there. Okay, okay, now start retrieving straight away. Now turn, 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 stop. Turn, keep going. All right, now stop, and I'm faster now because that bar's there, and you know that bar's there. And ultimately, the aim of the game is, okay, now slow down as you get closer, because you get you can quite often get hits underneath your feet where, they, where you, you've gone slow, fast, slow, and then you're bringing it over that bar, but all the key is you haven't got any weed on it. So if you've got weed on your lure when you're bringing it back, it's it's very unlikely you're going to be picking up pike. Now and again, and I mean rarely will they hit a lure when it's got weed on it, which is weird because it's a lump of plastic. You would think, you're, you're already hitting a lump of plastic. Well, you just yeah, bite it, it's got weed on it. No, you wouldn't, but it does, it massively does. Um, so that's the thing, is making sure that all the casts count and, and making sure that you learn out, learn where the weed is really, really quickly. And then hopefully, because um, there's only so many times a pike will follow a lure in it won't just keep following it until the weed's fallen off it. So if you do weed card, weed cast, weed cast, weed cast, weed cast like that, and one or two pike will come and add a look, that'd just be, nah, <laughs> I'm not gonna yeah. bother wasting energy chasing something which has got weed on it. So you have to try and really quickly do cast without getting weed on so that you can actually turn the to cast into productive cast to get the bites. So, um, so try, give it a good old punch, give it a good whack. Yeah, that's it, close bail arm. Don't point the, the turn the rod off, off a bit, like, so rather than pointing it dead at the lure, if you, you've got braid and a strong rod, okay, and if that pipe was to come up and just smash into that lure, there's nothing, there's no give, no nothing. Braid is fantastic for setting the hooks, that's that bar. So, um, so that's why we use it, you know, because we, they've got hard bony mouths and we want to penetrate the, the, um, the hook into the mouth. But also, it can work against you if you point your rod directly at the lure when you're bringing it back. Yeah. Um, because there's no give whatsoever. So you can have a couple of things happen. You know, you can have one, you can have hook pulls, um, which isn't good. Um, and two, you could potentially, if it was a very big fish, you could potentially have a snap off because with that amount of explosive power from a big pike and then it smashes into that lure and there's no give, it's literally coming straight to the reel because there's no bend in the rod, then it can actually um, potentially snap off more than likely it would probably straighten a treble as well so um so what we try and do is we just keep it at maybe 
if the lures come back at 12 o'clock, we're just at a kind of 11 o'clock or one o'clock. So we're still in contact, but we've still got enough, you know, bang in the rod to set the hook, but we've also got giving the rod to, um, to be able to absorb that initial, that initial hit. So, you know, it's gonna take you a while just to keep casting getting a feel, you've never held that rod before, you've never used that reel before, oh, you've never used these lures before. And um, you know, to me, it's like part of my arm <laughs> and I've cast them thousands of times. So it's very easy for me to say, do this, do that. But I understand it can take a bit of time just to, to learn. Always watching that lure as it comes back through. See, it's come back with no weed on. It doesn't matter that you didn't catch fish, it come back with no weed on and that's the key. As long as it's not just coming back because there's no weed on, because it's only six inches below the surface, so it's just working out those those levels and and bringing it back through. Okay, so we've done loads of straight casts. Do one down this line here, okay? So just, yeah, just cast it towards, towards the woods. That's it, I start reading fairly, fairly straight. Yeah. Give it a quick hard flick, because it's just on that reed there, yeah, it's come off. That's it, yeah, and I'll whip it in quickly there because he's just in the weed. That's it, let's have a look. So what happened there, right? Feel the wind in our face? Yeah. So what happened is braid is, is not like mono, it's super, it's super light, you can see it, it's, it's, there's nothing to it. So where that wind is, you know, it's a stiffening breeze now really, isn't it, coming in. And where it's gone, you cast it into exactly the right place, but the, the wind blew it in. So if I'm casting down the line like that, so I'm gonna cast down the line ish, I clamp it and I turn the rod sideways. Look at my line lay. Can you see it? Look, 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 see it touching the water? It's directly in line with where I wanted it to go. And then I just do a straight retrieve, maybe a couple of little flicks, but a straight retrieve across that weed line. And what I've done is because I've clamped it, it's a bit like if you're carp fishing and, um, and you hit the clip. I'm, I'm hitting the clip with my finger. Um, the reason you're doing it in carp fishing is to hit the mark. The reason I'm doing it in lure fishing is to, um, is to straighten up my braid because I don't want a massive, but if you cast in that end and on the drop, you had a take, there's a massive bow in that line and you're just like, oh, oh you would have half felt something, you know, it, it, you wouldn't have connected. Whereas if you're casting down the line, clamp it, let it tighten up, it goes down, bail arm straight over instantly and you wind, 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 bam, you're straight into that fish every time. Feeling it down. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're, you're clamping it in, clamping it, you can feather it, clamp it or feather it just to just to stop keep that braid tight and then straight away that's it that's better you can see the lines a little bit in front of the weed now that's it yeah that's it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. see it came back better and straight and it's yeah. clear so you fished and it was working uh, and do it again do it a couple of times yeah now stop reeling. Now reel. Yeah, it's good. It's come back clear. So um, what you can do, rather than putting any twitches into it, just do this. These are all different methods. Like they all work differently on a day. Um, okay, so that was up the line again. But okay, so I'm reeling. Stop reeling, reel again, stop, fast, stop, slower, stop, and it's just doing loads of different, loads of different things as it's coming back through, okay? And it's, it's, it's making it really erratic, so belt it out, that, that sort of distance you want to be fishing when you're out there, and then stop, let it go down a little bit, start reeling, stop, go again. Stop, yeah, hit that bar. And, and you can do two things. If I have my rod tip down here, that's gonna be coming into that bar. If I lift that rod tip up here, 
See straight away, see my line point where it goes in? It lifted that lure straight up. So what you can do is when you get it out in front of you, you know that bar, a, the first bar you get is, is about like just out there, yeah? What you can do is rather than having to reel up fast, you can just raise your rod tip up. Okay. Okay, so you can just raise the rod so tip up. Really yeah, and it's just, right, it, the angle it's coming towards you is up here. If you, if you lure fish and if you're here and you're bringing it down here, it's just gonna smack straight into that bar, like, you know? So um, have a go with that. That's it. Now you're over the bar, lower the rod down, and now start reeling again. So what, I, what you're doing is as it's coming in, you're lifting it up and you lift it over the bar and then you can lower the rod back down and then, and then carry on reeling and you've gone over the object you wanted to go over by yeah. just lifting or lowering the rod down. Uh, it's another way of getting them over things. Perfect demando. Got no weed, gone over different bars, different depths, it's coming back clear, isn't it? Yeah? So now give it some belts, like start belting it out there. That's it. That, that yeah, that'll catch you fish that well. And now and I'll start smacking it down that line now. So now you're gonna start working the swim because all we've done is there and there a little bit. Now we're gonna start fan casting around the swim. You'll hear people just say that you cast around the clock and they basically you come in, you start at nine o'clock down the margins, and then you go all the way around, finish at three o'clock down your right hand margin. So we've come down to this different part of the lake now um, and out in front of us here we've got a great big bowl we haven't got the gullies and the drop-offs up in front of us so now we're down this part of the lake we can do something a bit different so we're going to cast out we're going to let it go all the way down uh, the lures to sink to the bottom and once it sinks to the bottom a couple of turns stop a couple of turns stop and we're going to start skipping it across the bottom basically if you imagine your lure it's gone <laughs> bam stop and then it goes ooh, up stop Ooh, up, stop. So it's going like that as it goes across the bottom. Because any pike, pike love lying in, in a foot or two off the bottom. They just love lying in that. Okay, so what we're doing is, is we're scanning around and see if there's any pike lying off the bottom. Once we've covered this whole area and we've done off the bottom, then we're going to whack it out and start doing some straighter retrieves. And we're going to try and do mid-water. We're basically just trying to cover all the different layers of the water column. We're starting at the bottom and then we're going to move all the way up until we get a take, until we get a fish. So that is the plan. Sounds okay, good. so yeah, give it a good old whack as hard as you can. That's it. And watch that lure. See that line going all the way down. Bam. A few seconds. Yeah. That's it, keep going. All the time when you're fishing, you need to be looking for any signs as well. So as we walked down here, we saw there was a load of bait, well, not a lot, but we saw quite a few bait fish topping out there, didn't we? So, and we know it's, uh, we know it's a big bowl of kind of water out in front of us. We haven't got the drop-offs or the gullies in front of us in this bit, but what we've got is about 12, 13 foot of water. So there's a lot of water. Um, that's a 15 gram jig head. So that's gonna have a bit of a drop to get down. So, it's not that unlikely that you're gonna, you could get a fish on the drop because that lure is gonna be coming down through the water. 15 gram coming down through 12 foot, 
It's a nice steady drop really, um, with, a, with a lure that big on the back of it. So um, there's, there's every chance of casting out, curling it over, waiting, watching that line, watching that rod tip, and watching it go all the way down. As soon as you, if you do get the bang, you know, pull into it straight away. Here we go, see the silverfish there? Yeah. See them there? So, um, so we're always looking for that take on the drop. Once it goes down and it hits the bottom, just wait. Just wait three, four seconds, because we know it just stands there like that. Anyway, it just stands in the silt. You know, worst scenario, it might lean over a little bit. And then once it's down there, we just, once it's down there and it's been three or four seconds after you've cast and you felt the drop, little twitch, start reeling. About four or five turns, stop. Four, to four or five turns, stop. So I'm just gonna cast you, show you the drop, do a couple of turns and then give you the rod straight away. So I'm just gonna cast it out. I'm stopping it to tighten up that line like that and then I did a couple of turns to tie it up and then look just watching it go all the way down keep watching that line and it dropped yeah yeah and then once it's dropped I'll wait a couple of quick turns to kick it off the bottom a couple of turns stop see the bang yeah a couple of turns bang a couple of turns bang okay see what I mean all that all the way back like that bit of an angle on the rod as well. And once it gets in close, a bit like fly fishing, just slowly lift the rod up higher and just reeling, 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 reeling. So what the aim is, is when you get it in close, I caught a little bit there. What the aim is, when you get it in close, right? Because it's jumping, jumping, jumping on the way back quite often, they will follow that all the way in. But on a nice cold day, it's a good retrieve to do. So as it gets in close, so you get it in close, just a little bit of a straight retrieve, see it like that? Yeah. And then just lift it like a fly angler would, just slowly lifting it off. I mean, a, 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 you know, and then you've got the hang as well, which a fly angler, you know, as, as you were doing from about there, stop the skipping, just a slow straight retrieve, and then just ease it like that. If you did have a follow, you could always do something like that, you know, just twisting it around, trying to get it to take again. But really, only do that if you've got the follow. Otherwise, bring it in. A bit of a faster retrieve there and just slowly, 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 and always be looking behind the lure, not at the lure, to see if you've got anything following it, okay? Okay. And you've got your Polaroids, so you yep. I mean, Polaroids are, are absolutely vital in lure fishing. On bright days, on dull days, they just literally cut through that water surface glare, and you can see, I mean, yeah, you can see a lot more with them on. Did it get all the way down? That's it, yeah. Keep, keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. Oh, 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 okay, quick, no, get it out, put it, put it back past it. Shit, that's a decent fish, that. Not too far, not too far, not too far. I'll bring it in on a straight retrieve. Oh, look, 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 see the massive cloud of smoke? See it? Yeah. Nah, that's a good fish, mate. Keep fast retrieve. Keep the rod low, fast retrieve. Keep the rod low. Get it back out there, get it. I oh, know it's coming sideways. Look at that cloud. Yep. That's a good fish. Okay, so we've come to another swim now. We had a close chance <laughs> and we had a big fish come straight in and follow the lure. It came in quite slow, but it bolted off quick, didn't it? So it kind of, it needs to be rested. So we're going to leave that now now, but it would have definitely been a personal best for you if we'd have hooked it. So, <laughs> yeah, um, <man>. yeah. <laughs> so we're very close. So what we've got to now, this bit of the lake here, it's really shallow out in front of us. It's probably two and a half foot deep, something like that. But you do get a lot of fish lying up on the weed beds and everything. Um, you can use shallow lures, surface lures, all those types of things, but we're going to try and stick with the same lure. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to cast out, we're going to keep the rod really high, we're going to bring it back quite fast. You can see the trace. Yeah. You don't want the trace out of the water. You want to try and work it so it's about the length of the trace below the water, and that'd be about right because it's a couple of foot deep, and then you've got it there. Um, it's probably deeper than that, but there's a lot of weed. It's a huge sunken weed bed, basically, with, with fishing over the top of it. Um, so we're going to give that a go, and we're just going to bring it quite no twitches, no pauses, no, because if as soon as you do that, it's straight, straight in the weed. Yeah, it's going to drop and it's going to go in the weed. So it's just a straight retrieve, rolled up quite high, and we're, we're hopefully that they're going to smack it off the top as it comes through. That's the plan. <laughs> All right, let's give it a go. So, 
If I just show you one, I'm going to do one down there and I'm going to pass it to you, okay? But where I want you to be doing it is like aiming towards the, the hut and then working all the way around there. So a little bit lower. Okay, so it's out. As soon as it lands, turn that bail on and then keep that rod about there. See the speed I'm doing it? Yeah. And it's up about that, yeah? Okay, there you go. You keep reeling. A little bit slower, you can see the lure, yeah? Keep using your Polaroids so that you can see the lure. Keep going. Yeah, keep going fast, 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 fast. Did you see that? Yeah, we had a follow. Yeah, pipe chased it. Oh, look, look, look at the boil. Okay, get it back out again. Get it back out again. Okay, so we've just had a pike bow wave after the lure and then turn away and boil, so we're close. Okay, now bring it in nice and steady, not too fast that you can see the lure. Keep going. And don't forget, if you get a hit, bang, you strike into it, just lean into it. Faster, faster. Lower the rod now, lower the rod now, you can see the lure. Keep lowering it, you don't want to see, you just don't want to quite be able to see the lure. Keep going, keep going faster, faster, faster. Lower the lure, lower it, lower it, lower it. You always want to, they're not, they're not, okay, we're now bring it in quick. They don't want to, they don't want to erupt out the water and hit it. Yeah, they will, and especially in the summer, but they'd be much more confident if they can hit that lure when it's in deeper water, but you can't put it really deep because you're going to hit the weed, so you've just got to get that balance. Has that got weed on? Yeah, really in fast if it's got weed on. Yeah, it's twisted over on itself, yeah. Okay, now whip it into me. Yeah, they're getting more active, you see now. Yeah, there's, yeah so the sun's warming up, the water's warming up, the silver's warming up. Keep. Nah, no, they're there. They, we have, yeah. Now, try putting it out back over there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And next cast, let it go further and just feather it for the last two foot. You only need you only need two foot of distance for it to straighten up that blade. Like, keep the rod higher. No. Uh, uh, swing it to me. I think the lure's twisted over. Yeah. So. It's like if you need to kind of nearly feather it so it doesn't go like that. So, so it's like if you hit a clip when you're carp fishing, you hit it. You don't. If you hit it and it's bam, it's just going to go bam. And it's yeah. going to bounce back. And then, and then what happens then is it goes bam, bounces back, and it can. If the hooks come free, it can snag on its own tail or it can go around the trace. So what you want to do is is out. And if you're gonna if you're gonna stop it dead with your finger, stop it dead there and feather it down into the, l l use the rod to lure it down into the water. So you're cushioning that, or you can you know you, whichever is easiest. You can feather it by putting your finger against a spool, which will feather it, um, but no solid bang. Okay, and, and and but punch it as far as you can. We're very close to a fish. You know. Yeah, that's it. And keep looking for your lure behind where your line goes in the water. When you can see it, just lower the rod down a little bit. That's it, that's it, you got it, you got it. That's it, that is it. Now that was bang on. Now just keep doing that. That is bang on, come back, perfect. You were lowering it down as you could see the lure because of the Polaroids, you could see the lure flashing. You just want to take that flash away from you. And no weed came back on it. Yeah, okay, so. Do it out over towards that boat. Just keep the rod a bit higher, reel in a bit faster. Try and get the lure about three foot below the surface if you can, if you can kind of work out where that is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's it. Close it. Okay, so we've moved over to uh, another area where we've just seen some pike striking on some silver fly. So um, we've gone back onto the pro shad. Gives a nice silver flash. And um, hopefully, we can pick up a fish. That's it, do exactly the same again. That's it, yep, close it. Oh, look to our left, strike just to the left, just on the inside line, very close in. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh. Okay, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Bring the rod in. Okay, 
next time you get the um, next time they come. Yeah. Because you probably thought it was the bar as well, but he, he hit it just after the bar. We're getting close. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whack it out that far again, yeah. Well, I seen the fish. <laughs> uh, it was alright, yeah. Keep the rod a bit higher, a bit weedier than you think out there. Keep it a bit and, and a nice steady, steady retrieve, and that'll keep him up. I think he's got weed on him from that. Oh yes, lean into it. Okay, don't forget filming. Oh, look at all those fly. Yeah! Oh. Pike on the bank, on the pro shad. Woohoo! Well done, mate, perseverance. Yeah. Perfect casting, perfect retrieve. And it nailed it just there, uh, right in front of you. <laughs> you don't forget that. Yeah, beautiful, look at it, it's hit, it's side on. You can see half the pro shads coming out one side and half's coming out the other. So now, we go through the bits about how we look after the pike. We're keeping them in the water. It's a big net, ice cold water. Exactly. And now we're going to look at um, unhooking and what we're going to do to make sure that that pike stays in exactly the same condition as it is now to when we put it back. Sounds good. Well done, mate. Happy Cheers, days. Ma Happy days. Okay, so. We've got this pike, it's rolled in the net, treble's all wrapped around there. I am not gonna muck around. I'm just gonna get the cutters. I'm gonna cut it there. See how easy that was? Yeah, nice and easy. Yep. Yeah. And then what I'm gonna do then is just grab that, grab that point. See if we can grab it that way. Now we'll grab it that way. Okay, and then we just take that out. Again, it's a sharp spike, so we put it in the mat so we know where it is. And then take that net out, put that fish in a nice wet and hooky mat. And hang on, man. He stops biting the yeah. net. <laughs> stops biting the net, and then we're away. Right. Now, to hold it, roll it over so you're comfortable. He's got a leech on it there. Look, it's come up off the bottom. I always like to flick him off. I don't think it does some huge damage, but it's nice to flick him off. So to hold it, you can hold it. Carp style, if you like yeah. that. You can hold it like that. You don't have to slide your hand up inside its gills. You can hold it like that. Again, keep it close to you. Don't hold it really high. Got the mat there if it did go down. It's a good solid mat. And away you go. Just be nice and confident with it, like you would a carp. No difference at all. When you're holding it like that, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. And there we go. Okay. Now let's just say if we turn this one round. You will probably to chin this fish. Just let it settle. Come on. Okay. So to gin this fish, can you slide your hand there? Yeah. See inside? Those gill rakers will feel like sandpaper. They're not teeth, all right? But it will feel rough and you can get rash or cross your fingers, but it's nothing. Never rip your hand out, okay? Slide in and you should be able to connect your thumb. You should be able to feel your thumb against your finger inside there like that, okay? You okay. can see? So you're holding that and then lean it on its side, okay? And then, and then you'd have the forceps in that other hand, okay? So just have a quick go on that one. Can you feel your hand? Yeah. And then lean it up towards you and then actually open its mouth as you lift its head towards you. Lift its head up, lift its head up towards you. Lift it a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, and it will naturally, see the mouth is opening yeah. up, and then you'd be able to get that lure undone or get that trace out, okay? Yeah. And that's how you'd be able to get inside there. Now, if you let this one go back down. Now, if that was a any pike that it can thrash around, the safest way is if I, if you, if you just uh, come around a second, we're gonna, the safest way is for me to get on and straddle that, straddle that fish, okay? Because that fish is there, this is a soaking wet mat. Can't go anywhere. So yeah, it's a soaking wet mat. What can it do with my legs here like this? Never put any pressure on it, because it's a fish and it's very delicate. And um, I can feel actually, it's got a meal inside there. Um, and then when I go like that and look inside there, that's where our lure was there. But then you can, in, you can see as I lift up its head, it opens and then in you go. Okay, steady love. Um, and, and then that's how we would do it. But it can't flash around, can it? Okay, so it, it's in between your legs and you're in control. So that's, that's probably the safest and easiest way for somebody learning to unhook. You ought to see people do it in the margins and chin them by the bank and 
do it without straddling them. Yeah, but can't crash around that way. no, that's it. It's safe for you. It's safe for the fish. And then we get that fish back as quick as we can. The quickest way and the safest way is to take it back in this map. Okay. Well, they. Oh yeah, there, let's move them out of the way. So we can take this one. So what we've got to do, hold her by her tail. And she's just getting her bearings back at the moment. You see she's starting to kick a little bit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, there she goes, nice and strong. See she powered down deep? Yeah. Ice cold water. It's a good time of year to be pipe fishing. And it's your first one from a new lake in Somerset. So congratulations, mate. Thanks, ma'am. Now, let's catch its <laughs> mum, yeah? <Whoa! laughs> so what we've been using today is, a, is a, a rod, which is a bit of an all-round rod, really. So, Warrior 2, so it's the newest one out. Um, and it's the spin 270. 270 is the length, so it's 270 centimetres, and it's 8.8 .8 feet, which is ideal because any shorter than that, and where we fish nowadays is always like today, there's lots of inside reed beds, inside margins, everything like that. Whereas when you've got a rod which is heading towards nine foot, it just gives you enough leverage to be able to get past and work the inside lines. Um, so it's a good length. And it also, the longer the rod, you can actually push it out a little bit further and cast those lures further as well. This one's rated 20 to 60 gram. So we've had a 15 gram pro shad on for most of the day, which is, um, it's a guidance when it's 20 to 60 gram. Um, and it's there and thereabouts, but it's been ideal, isn't it really, for casting yeah. size lures. On the job you can feel it's quite sensitive. Mm. Oh, yeah, so it's quite a tippy rod, but it's got, as you can see down there, if you can see that, but it's quite a tippy rod, but it's got a load of backbone on it. Um, so you can feel the plucks and the knocks, but it's got the backbone to be able to set the hook and then, and then play those fish in. Um, and then we go down to the reel. So we've got a Prism 4000. Uh, this is the biggest Prism reel we do. Little 1000s we tend to use for the kind of drop shot and the ultralight jigs. Um, and the 4000 for the bigger rods and the heavier the heavier uh, lures. And we've got that loaded up with, um, we've got it loaded up with 55 pound and it's the Pro X8. Um, and we've got it in grey. I mean, 55 pound sounds heavy. Um, but it's probably the same diameter as 15 pound line. So um, diameter wise, it's not. Um, strength wise is what we need it for. We need it for pulling lures out when they get stuck. We need it for in snags. We need it so that we can get the pike in in case they try to get into snags and we can bully them through. And we need it because it's got zero stretch so that it can actually set those hooks as well. So it sounds a bit beefy and a bit heavy, but you've seen today we can cast plenty far enough with it. It doesn't restrict you that way. Um, and it's got all those properties I've just mentioned. Um, just back onto that prison reel. Also the drag, really smooth drag. And that's really, really important as well for playing fish and, and, and stopping the hook pulls and everything as well. That one on that. And that's it really, you've got a lovely outfit there which you can hold all day, it doesn't get too heavy. Cast the lures out, no problem. You've got quite a wide range of lures you can use on these, from everything down to these ones, up to the replicants. Um, and you've got a good solid reel, which will, you know, these reels last for years, absolutely years. I, I've got a couple of these and they're going strong and they're probably at least two and a half years old now. So they're pretty bulletproof. And again, the rod's pretty bulletproof as well, which is what you want, because when you're lure fishing, you're quite often ripping yourself through reed beds and going through woodlands and brambles and things like that, where these, they really stand up to it. So yeah, this is yours. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. So we've spoken about the rod, the reel. Now, what happens if we get a pike? You need to use the net. This is what happens. You got it, Matt. You got it. So it needs to use net. This might look like a big net, and it is a big net. <laughs> However, there's some big pike in here, and. Uh, You've seen yourself, even when you have a pike just resting in the margins, this just gives those pike enough space to, to rest. Um, it, it makes it easier for when you go to net a fish as well because of the size of it. And, you know, it doesn't take two seconds. Just to close it down, fold it over, twist it round, and you're carrying a really big net. Um, but yet yeah, you've, uh, you've made that size a lot smaller. So, yeah, absolutely vital. And then we go on to the unhooking mat. Again, might seem like a big unhooking mat, but it's absolutely vital. So these are the new Predator mats, and as you can see, they've actually got inside, 
all the measurements so that you can actually do the length, which is becoming more and more popular in this country. Um, but ultimately, it's about keeping that fish um, safe. I use these, uh, the, the fox ones, for my carping and for my piking. And the great thing about them is the sides, because once you've got that mat wet inside, you can put that fish in there. You can't walk away and leave it, obviously, but it just gives you time just to move around next to it without knowing it's going to slip and slide off your conventional flat unhooking mat. So, I mean, these are great on the bank and on the boat, but equally as good, um, they're fantastic mats. Uh, and they fold down, and actually they make quite a nice seat if you're dead baiting. <laughs> so they've, they're a bit universal. So, again, two absolutely essentials. Um, then we go on, always got to have forceps. I've got these ones here which I keep there for when I'm lure fishing um, and they're just there, I'll put a few beads on them just so you can see them but they're there, absolutely vital but I also carry another longer set which are in my backpack. Um, if these are anywhere around the, the mouth, absolutely great and the longer ones if the hooks are a little bit deeper down and then we should have oh, some cutters. We saw earlier the pike had rolled in the net a little bit. Cutters are absolutely vital. I've had hooks go in my finger a couple of times over the years and I've literally been able, sometimes on a trace when the other hook is still in the fish and it's rolled and it's spun and it's been in winter and it's just suddenly kicked out of the blue and, and the hook's gone in and I've been able to cut that treble, unhook that fish, put that fish back and then deal with myself afterwards. But if I didn't have them, uh, it could be all sorts of problems. And for the fish's safety, which is, is paramount as well. Today, if we hadn't have unhooked that fish by cutting that treble, it could have spun in the net and then it could have twisted around and it could have been a really nasty uh, situation for the fish so we can just cut those hooks hooks cost peanuts and and pike take a long time to to grow and get big so with those cutters we can just cut those hooks so i always keep them in my backpack and ready as well so that's the kind of hardware that we need when we go pike fishing and now we'll have a quick look at some lures some traces and then i think we're nearly good to go so lures <laughs> Well, I mean, I think it's a little bit like um, an addiction with lures for most pike anglers who lure fish. Uh, you buy a lure, people are sold on <laughs> what it looks like, how it looks in the water. Some people like the bright lures, some people like uh, 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 lures with tails like this, some people like them like this. Um, like, it really, really varies. Um, there's courses for courses. so. For example, today we tried that one there, so we've got the, the replicant uh, wobble, but it's in shallow. So basically we saw that one was working just probably, what, a foot, two foot below the surface yeah. over the wee beds. So you do need lures which can work the shallow water. So it's always worth having a couple of them in your box. Um, we do them in different sizes as well. Predominantly, we've been using those today, which is the Pro Shad for the reasons we talked about earlier. The, They've got a good drop on them, they've got the single treble, um, they're easy to unhook because you've just got that one hook there, so it's good for the pike and good for us. Um, and they're good on waters of this sort of style as well. And uh, we've got them in lots of different patterns and colours. Silver bait fish, there's lots of pike striking today, there's lots of silvers bunched up because it's, it's winter time. So if you're going to thrash one of them through the water and it's got a load of wobble to it and a load of flash, hopefully you get a bit of a knee jerk reaction and, and you get a strike from the pike like we did. And then, um, it looks like a monster, <laughs> but it, your rod is more than capable of casting that. Um, and uh, because in fact, even though it's really big, it's only got a 20 gram jig head. Um, and um, it's again, it's another pro shad um, and it's a natural classic too, but it's, um, it's a classic color. Fire tiger is, if, some people use them on bright days. Some people say they work best when it's dull days. Some people say they're best in clear water. Some people in coloured water. The best lures are the ones which work best for you, which you feel confident in. And those are usually the ones you caught your last pike or two on. And then you tend to use them more than any other. And then that might not work one day. You stick another lure on and that works. And then so the journey begins and you start collecting more and more uh, lures. So these little pro grub here. I mean, look at that tail. It's a big. Big tail. Yeah, that literally twists. Got a great drop on it. Obviously, you just got to put a little jig head in there, a little screw in one or one which you're going to thread through. Sometimes you have a little stinger on the back. Sometimes it's going to be a jig head which has got one on there. Depends how you want to thread those up, but they're great. And they've got the realistic colours on them as well. So that's a little chub looking like one. And then spiky shad. I like a spiky and uh, these are fantastic we do them in so many different colors so many different ranges um, again your rod 
stick a 10, 15 gram jig head on that and it could cast that as it, it would probably be on the very lower end of that rod. You wouldn't want to go much smaller than that on that rod. Um, you'd step the rod down if you were going to start going any smaller than that. But you can see they've got hundreds of little nodules on, great big paddle tail on them. Um, if you had those, well you have now because these are yours, but if you had these in your, in your, um, in your box and you coupled them up with these traces, I mean here today we've been using 40 centimetre 12 kilogram okay so um, that's what we've been using on that rod and with those lures uh, and we've been using 19 strand okay so they're, they're really good traces because it takes a lot to kink them I mean you, you can see we've had a few fish today and, and yeah, uh, pulled them through weed beds yeah no problem at all they haven't pigtailed up and they haven't bent over so always got to keep checking them fish after fish but they're really really good um, my rod I, um, I had on my rod a solid titanium one I use both to be honest um, but quite a lot of people if they're using maybe a hard bait like a salmo slider or something like that something which they're working a lot slower with kinks and pulls they they might use those solid titanium traces just because they don't collapse up and bend up and they don't catch around the trebles as much so but again it's horses for courses you can you can use what suits you and what you feel the most confident with ultimately you just don't want that pipe to be able to bite through those traces and, and to be left with a lure and that's the thing really it's about the, the pipe welfare and then it's about what you feel most comfortable with so we've looked through uh, we've looked through the rod the reel the unhooking mat the net the lures the traces the unhooking equipment the cutters um, you've got a bag here which goes over your shoulder I wear this one here just because I like this style of bag. Some people like those style of bags, but as long as you've got a bag where you can keep your forceps and, and the cutters and your lures and, and all your jig heads and things like that goes over your shoulder, you've got your rod and you've got your other hands to carry the mat and, and, and the net, then that's it. I mean, you're good for a day's fishing really, you're good for a day's pipe fishing and that's all the gear you need. Um, and it can be, it's, it's a light mobile style of fishing, which can, you know, rather than sat there on the bank, it just keeps you really active. And, and if you've got an hour, two hours, you know, sometimes it just, it's just one cast in the right place. And, and that could be the best cast you've ever done in a monster, monster pike on the end, which might still happen today because we've still got an hour or so left. So fingers crossed. <laughs> well, we've seen a monster. Now we just got to try and catch one. <laughs> Well, I've never used it. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, somebody did it, that. Yeah. Death. Oh, keep going, keep going, keep going. Give it some welly, give it some welly. Bend into it. Bend into it. Give a good bend on it. That's it, that's it. That's it. Loads of welly, loads of welly. That's it, it's coming out now. That's it, good man. God, there's some silver fish down in front of me. Did it? <laughs> and she comes. Way! Oh yeah, she's happy. <laughs> wow! Yeah! Well done, mate. Well done. Okay, so this one we're just gonna hook. We're gonna unhook this one in the water. Just it wanted that. There it is. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's a fast, it's, gone. it's a fast release. <laughs> well done.